the Glynet GLAR750X Slate router comes in a very discreet package and it's um, it's kind of cool. Um, this router is made for to be as little as possible but as functional as possible because it's a travel um, router. Inside the package you're gonna find the router itself with uh, three Ethernet port, a USB port, a micro USB port which is used to charge it, um, a switch on the uh, left hand side, uh, two antennas that can uh, you know go down and up according in order to bring it um, as easily as possible. Um, and also you can see here on the back we can see uh, three LED, uh, one for 2G, one for 5G, and another one for the power. Inside the package, you're also going to find a, um, ether an Ethernet cable, uh, a micro USB cable for, so that you can charge it, and a charger. The charger is a um, United States one. Um, which is built in over here. However, you're gonna have um, also two adapter. You can have the uh, European one, which is actually using the Italian version of the plug, and also the British one, which is using you know the British version of the plug um, with without ground, uh, so just um, phase and uh, neutral. Uh, so. This is what you find inside the package. Um, the router has many functionalities. Uh, for instance, you can connect to it and use um, the um, and use it uh, for the VPN and other things. And I'm going to be show you in a minute. Okay, so as you power on the router, you're going to see uh, two Wi-Fi. One. Um, with 5G and the other without. One with 5G stands for 5 gigahertz and the one without anything stands for 2.4 gigahertz. So depending on your um, network interface, you're gonna be able to see uh, either one of them or both of them if you have a recent uh, network interface card. So once you connect to into the one of those two, um, and you're going to find the password attached in the documentation that they deliver in the back in the package so in the box um, once you get in there you have to go to uh, 192.168.8.1 and you're going to have to insert the password and the password by default you're going to see it in the documentation so this is the interface that you're going to see once you get into the router. Uh, it ships with uh, OpenWRT, um, so it has uh, many functionalities. So you can see the internet, and you can switch the protocol from the ACP, statics, or PPPoE. Um, you can go to the wireless and uh, choose whether you're going to have a guest Wi-Fi and modify you know, you, the SSID, the security, and uh, Wi-Fi key. Uh, same goes for uh, this. Uh, you can have it open or using the WPA2 or the WPA2 WPA, uh, WPA PSK. So you cannot use the WPA2 um, uh, the WEP, um, so the WEP, uh, because it's no longer supported and nobody should be able, you know, should protect their own Wi Fi with uh, WEP, so WEP, uh, because if you have um, tools like iCrack and iRodump and so on, uh, you're going to be able to crack them. So they removed the possibility to uh, use uh, WEP. Uh, you can also choose whether you have the, S the SSID is going to be hidden or uh, not, and um, also which channel, um, in which channel you're going to have. You can also set it to automatically, and um, um, you know let the uh, router pick the channel for you. You can also set the uh, power in terms of decibel, uh, in which the antenna, the two uh, two decibel antenna are going to 
work, um, I suggest to set it to maximum Wi-Fi is fairly, um, you know, it, it doesn't harm you. So, uh, but again, uh, the user can choose. And the same goes for the uh, 5 gigahertz. You can modify uh, the setting and again, uh, you have the option about the bandwidth, uh, the, you can modify the uh, password, the name, and so on and so forth. If you move to clients, you can see uh, which computer are actually connected inside the network. Uh, Localhost is actually my computer, so this is actually fine. Um, you can also see, instead of it refreshing, you can also turn on the um, uh, real-time statistics. However, to, if you have many clients connected, it's going to uh, it's, it's going to require a lot of CPU. You can also uh, upgrade either manually, so by downloading the file and uh, uh, uploading the image file, or automatically and set uh, whether the router should check for updates and update itself automatically. If we move to firewall, uh, we can actually uh, choose the zone. Um, put the internal IP, the internal port, uh, choose whether we're going to enable or disable this port, and of course for TCP or UDP or both. We can also have um, open singular individual ports and also have a demilitarized zone. But the most important feature is the VPN because you can actually install a, a VPN configuration for OpenVPN, which is the most widespread and secure and safe protocol um, to connect to a VPN. And also, you can host a VPN server using this router. You can also do the same thing for WireGuard, although it's uh, experimental. And of course, there is a, an internal kill switch, which basically means that uh, if your VPN is disconnected for whatever reason, um, it's going to kill and block all the traffic. So no, you're not going to leak anything uh, to the uh, your internet service provider, uh, and uh, you're going to have all the traffic blocked if the VPN disconnects. And you can set VPN policies for, like, for instance, you can set them for individual um, MAC addresses. Uh, if you want, for instance, some computers in the network to use it or some other not to use it. For instance, for maybe you have your computer and you want to use, I don't know, like torrent or whatever, and you want to enable the VPN for your computer but you also have a smart fridge on your network and you don't really care whether it's using the VPN or not. So, you know, you can, you can choose uh, which devices are going to use the VPN and which other are not, which is very, very useful. And also, last but not least, there is also Tor, so the Tor network. So you can also choose the exit country uh, in which you're going to be proxied as the um, output of this network. Uh, but again, I don't really suggest using Tor, uh, although it's really cool to have it uh, here. Um, the problem with Tor is that uh, you, you have no control over who is going to host you your, and uh, from who your traffic is going to go through. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's not safe, especially if you want to use, you know, um, a bank account or stuff like that. So I don't really uh, suggest uh, using Tor, but it's nice to have. Um, there are also applications. You can use uh, plugins and install uh, or uninstall plugins from users. Um, you can use the file sharing functionality because if you put a micro, you, uh, a micro uh, SD card inside the router, you're going to be able to share it um, via SMB across all your devices. Um, you can also have the uh, remote access and um, 
You can also have a uh, captive portal and forward all the tra all the people that are going to connect to your router to a URL uh, if you are hosting, for instance, a public hotspot, which is also really cool. And about more setting, you have uh, the admin password, which you can change. Uh, you can change the IP if you don't want 192.168.8.1. You can set it to the classic point 1.0 or whatever. Um, you can change the time zone. Um, you can clone your MAC address. Insert custom DNS server. And it's also supporting DNS over um, TLS from Cloudflare, which is also really interesting for, and for security. Um, you can change which uh, the bottom, the physical button inside the router, what, what they're gonna do. Uh, by default, uh, it's, it's not gonna do anything, but um, you can set it to uh, toggle the VPN or on or off or, I don't know, Tor or, um, uh, or whatever, which is also really cool because you have a nice physical switch to turn the VPN on. Uh, about network mode, you can uh, the router can work as a router, as an access point, as a repeater, so an extender, or uh, with the WDS. You can also, if an upgrade didn't work correctly, you can also revert your uh, your firmware. Uh, there are also a page called Advanced Setting, um, which is going to show you the advanced setting and I'm going to have to log in and um, it's basically going to show you what the device is uh, actually doing. Um, you know, the beat rate and so on, uh, the uh, network, who is connected there and who is not and so on and so forth. And um, Basically, uh, many many ways to con to work with OpenWRT, which is very powerful and very useful. So again, you have a lot of tools. As to the um, router itself, uh, the CPU is a is just a 775 megahertz CPU uh, with the DDR2 128 megabytes memory uh, in terms of RAM. That's a dual flash 16 megabyte plus 128 megabyte NAND. Um, it has a one gigabit um, Ethernet port. Uh, there are other Ethernet ports uh, on the other hand. Um, there are up to three. Uh, there is a USB 2.0 interface with which you can connect a, um, a, a 2G, 3G, 4G, or 5G, um, you know, Wi-Fi uh, stick, uh, and um, you, the, the stick is gonna is gonna work through the uh, router, and you can use this one uh, to connect to internet. Um, you, you also have a micro USB, but that's only for power, so to power on the, um, the router. You have a reset button and, of course, a micro SD card slot, which unfortunately supports up to 128 gigabytes. I didn't actually try with, um, 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 you know, larger cards. Uh, some people claim that it's working, um, so it may or may not work. Um, as to the uh, transmission rate is uh, 300 megabit per second for the 2.4 gigahertz and 432 megabit per second for the 5 gigahertz and of uh, in both of them uh, the power of the two antenna is the 20 decibel however you can in, um, decrease the power the protocol is the standard 802.11 a b g and a c and in terms of the micro USB, uh, it supports all the Linux file system from X2 to X3 to X4, and also the Windows one like XFAT, NTFS, and of course the legacy FAT32. The power supply is either 3.3 volts or 5 volts, um, but that's taken care by the, um, you know, by the um, the charger, uh, but you can also easily connect 
uh, it to a USB port for uh, your laptop or your desktop, doesn't matter. Uh, the antenna, as I said, they are uh, 2 dBi um, and uh, there are two antenna. You cannot remove them, but you can uh, move them <laughs> to to, easily, to carry the router more easily. Uh, you probably need to put 5 volts to amperes, um, and uh, it's uh, the power consumption is less than 6 joules per second, so 6 watts. Uh, and the dimension is pretty, um, it's not, you know, that big is, uh, it's actually, you can easily carry it in your pocket, so it's, a slim, it's slimly versatile. Uh, those are some of the features, as I highlighted before, and especially I like the, the fact that it has a VPN, it can be, uh, be either be a VPN server or a VPN client, uh, which is really, really cool. Um, and yeah, this is essentially the router. So uh, again, I hope it helps and uh, uh, I, I've been trying it for a few weeks now and uh, it's really cool. I mean, OpenWRT is really, really good because it allows you to do pretty much everything. And uh, having a VPN feature right there at a click it's extremely useful. It's everything I wanted, anything I needed, and uh, that's, that's really, really cool. So I totally suggest this router. It's 